Hi, uh, good luck with your diagnosis today. We hope that everything goes smoothly. And don't worry if you do get diagnosed and um, if they do say you have PCOS, don't let that create panic in yourself because yeah. sisters have time. You have all the resources available you to have you. The sisterhood. To, yeah, to basically reverse your symptom, manage your PCOS for the rest of your life. Ovacetol oh, shot in July and have gotten three periods. Typically only have one every other month. That's awesome. That's great. Great Who progress. Who else is on Ovacetol? Tell us how you're doing. Yeah. Thank you so much for Ovacetol. I just got my first supply. How exciting. Yeah. What is Ovacetol? This is my fave supplement for mm -hmm. PCOS. Helps with cravings. Helps with regulating your period. It's just a nice little powder. You put it in your water. It tastes like nothing. You take it twice a day. And it really helps manage insulin resistance from the root of the issue. I've linked it in the highlight called Ovacetol. We have a 15% off code. It is seriously the best supplement ever. Like it helps instantly. Like if you have bad cravings, instantly, like in mm -hmm. 15 minutes. Oh, let's see. I've been diagnosed. Where do I start? Oh, we have the sisterhood. <laughs> yeah. But what we'll say is uh, to a sister who's been recently diagnosed or newly diagnosed, like what's their, you know, what's the path that they get started on to kind of have a great mindset? Well, try to look at PCOS as something that is going to nudge you in the right direction towards better health and help you, you know, prevent a lot of illnesses from happening to you in the future because you're going to take your health into your hands today. Mm -hmm. Your diet, your lifestyle, everything is going to affect PCOS and in turn prevent you from having other chronic illnesses. So it's important to take it seriously and to really grab so a hold hot. of your health. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> okay. My sweaty husband. So, so anyways, don't panic. You can do lots of diet and lifestyle changes to help. That's the first thing. And we can help you do that. Yeah. We have a member of the sisterhood. And we walk you through the five-stage success path, all the things you need to know, what your doctor didn't tell you, and so on. Yes. One second. All right. Let's see um, some questions that have come in. Does Ovacetol help with weight? Does Ovacetol help with weight loss? Well, it helps with insulin resistance and cravings. So if you're getting a lot of cravings due to your insulin, then it will really help with that because it will just, you know, um, help control your insulin so you don't get those cravings later on after your meals. You're able to um, lose weight as a result. Yeah. I feel like cravings are one of the worst parts of PCOS because it's like yeah. so uncontrollable. And sometimes you feel like it's you, your lack of self-control, but it's really your hormones. It has nothing to do with your self-control. Yeah. So it's important to nurture our hormones in different ways. For example, um, going gluten and dairy-free can really help with insulin resistance. It can help with um, inflammation that, you know, contributes to insulin resistance. Yeah. And, and uh, cravings. cravings. Oh. Accordingly to the doctors and the feedback we've got, you can take Ovacetol with birth control, so that is okay to take. But you know, yeah. it's always good to consult a doctor to be sure. Everyone's complaining about cravings, but I know. Yeah. It's really from insulin resistance. Like when you eat a lot of carbs after a meal, you might feel even hungrier mm -hmm. because your insulin is floating around in your bloodstream, and that's making you think eat more and have cravings because insulin is that hormone that takes the food from your bloodstream and put it in your cells to burn up. But if your cells are resistant to it and they don't want to burn up the sugar in your bloodstream, then insulin left floating around, making you think you want to eat more, triggering high testosterone, you know, irregular periods, bad cravings to manage your insulin resistance. Yeah. Uh, question here. When it comes to birth control, it's very like, a complicated you know, topic because it, birth control does work for some people, but it doesn't work for others. Birth control does work for some people, but it doesn't work for others because many times birth control can like mask the symptoms and kind of make you forget about the symptoms. It doesn't really fix it. 
So maybe 10 years down the line, maybe when you decide to have children or you just want to stop taking birth control, then all those issues come back and then you're left with all those symptoms and you're kind of like, oh shit, like where, where did all this come from? It was all there. It was just being masked by the birth control. So because of that reason, we recommend like diet and lifestyle change because a lot of times like cycles and like hair loss and all fatigue, a lot of these issues can be related to insulin resistance. That's why we recommend Ovacetol as a natural supplement because they can really target that and help with, you know, regulating your cycles and stuff like that. And um, two weeks ago, we had a great episode with Dr. Jolene Brighton. If many of you probably know her, but Dr. Jolene Brighton is an expert on birth control and pulse birth control syndrome. Basically, her whole um, – she's basically trying to, like, educate women to know that there's, a, there's more options than birth control and that there is other alternatives. So listen to our podcast, A Sister and Her Mister. The episode was uploaded, I think, two weeks ago. And basically, she talks about birth control. And she also talks about, like, if you're on birth control, what you can do to still manage your symptoms and make sure that you're doing good. So check that episode out. We linked the podcast in our link in bio today because we have a new episode that came out today. Oh, yeah. Five biggest mistakes we make during PCOS weight loss with PCOS weight loss. Yeah. Um, typically, we link the sisterhood in our bio, but today it's linked in stories if you wanted to join. So right now, if you want to listen to our episode, our new podcast episode is up, and the link is in the bio. Yeah. Uh, Ashley says, hey, guys, love your page so much. Princess Lily sent us a big love. Gift. Thank you, Princess Lily. We appreciate that. Um, and then... She asked about talking to us one-on-one. -on -one. So currently, we don't do one-on-one -on -one consultations. But we do have this sisterhood where we help you go through learning and discovering your PGS type. Uh, two of them, where we go like face-to-face -face with all the sisters. They get to basically tell us about what, what's going on with them. We get to talk to them almost like one-on-one, -on -one, but with everybody there. So it's honestly a, a great way to kind of um, jumpstart. Yeah. Pour yourself a glass of Ovacetol and chat with us. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, I did a story last night about mm. mindset, and I hope everyone saw it because I feel like it's a really important component to changing your diet. I know we talk about going gluten and dairy-free and how much it could help you, but we want everyone to go at it with a really positive mindset, and we try to portray that in the sisterhood with like, yeah. the fun and informative all or nothing, really yeah. dramatic. So I also mentioned that in my stories last night. I, I did like a cute little compassionate with ourselves. And I forgot the third one. <laughs> there was a third one. But anyways, because you never know what's really going to work for your body. It could be going gluten and dairy free, or it could be something. Uh, um, do you guys think gluten and dairy free can help with endometriosis? Yes. Yeah. There are actually studies on that. Yeah, that shows that it helps with that. They didn't do studies for PCOS. But... Yeah. Calls, so the Zoom calls are part of the sisterhood. So if you're listening on TikTok or on YouTube, the Zoom call, you can join the sisterhood. If you go to our Instagram, it's in the highlights. It's called the sisterhood. So if you click there, where you get you know all everything we talk, plus the Facebook calls, Zoom calls, and everything. So is dairy free <clears throat> the same as lactose free? No. Dairy free. Is the controversial, the controversies. When it comes to fruit, you want to choose whatever's lower on the glycemic index. So like blueberries, strawberries, things like that, apples, you know, they don't spike your blood sugar as quickly as like mangoes and pineapple and things like that. Yeah. But I think, you know, it's also nice to have an open mind and just eat whichever fruits that you like because we're already, you know, limiting ourselves with gluten and dairy. So I don't like to be like too restrictive, mm -hmm. but um, it's up to you. So anyways, yeah. it's about portion size too. Like how much are you eating? Is it one serving, which is like a handful about like whatever would fit in your hands is a good um, measurement with your eye. You can measure it out if you want, but I would prefer to just like take my hand and see whatever mm -hmm. fits. One apple, half a banana because they're a little sweeter, you know, yeah. a handful of blueberries or something. But anyways, that's really important, the portion size, how you pair it. So are you eating it with nuts to slow down its absorption into your bloodstream? That's super important because, you know, fruit is sugar. 
So you don't want it to like spike your blood sugar because you had like five pieces of fruit because you thought it was a healthy snack. I remember doing that. I would have a lot of fruit every time I wanted to snack because I had really bad cravings. So I would just have a bunch of fruit. Yeah. And so that's why I tell my patients and now I'm telling my followers to eat one piece of fruit a day especially in the beginning when you're first trying to manage PCOS. And then later on when your insulin resistance is under control, you can add in more. Mm -hmm. But for now, I recommend one fruit a day because that is going to help with managing your blood sugar. You're really re reducing your intake of sugar from anywhere, whether it's cookies or if it's from fruit, like whatever it is, it's still going to affect your insulin resistance. So yeah. um, eat it wisely, pair it with some food, make sure you're having like a handful, one serving a day. And then later on, you can add in more as you become less insulin resistant and you feel better. Whatever you feel is best is yeah. really how you should do this. And as, as sorry, there's a comment right that I wanted to read. But as you can tell from Tallinn's whole uh, explanation, nowhere there did she say that fruit is bad or that you shouldn't have fruit or anything like that. So please try to understand what we're saying here. Yeah. We're not saying that fruit is bad, but we're just talking about insulin resistance here when it comes to PCOS. So don't let other people put words into our mouth. I think the real sisters know what we say. People try to say that we said something wrong, but we never did. So it's just it's what happens when we're helping so many people, you know? Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's move on to more questions. Uh, oh, look at this beautiful message. Uh, Redance. And Katie says, after finding out about my PCOS in January, I found your page and learned a lot. I lost 80 pounds. I've been on a vast stall for two months. I am finally pregnant. And I, after years of trying, thank you both. Amazing. That's awesome. Great Katie. job. Everybody give a great job to Katie. Honestly, like. Please send us a pic. Yeah. Oh, amazing. my God. Amazing. We're so proud of you. That's so good. You're yeah. so motivating. You know how many people are watching that like feel like that's impossible? Yeah, yeah, a lot of claps, a lot of a lot of uh, hearts coming in. Amazing. Go girl, you go. And people, you re go, girl. people really like the fruit advice. That's great. That is great. We're glad. If you have any questions, yeah. And if anyone is misinterpreting our information, for all you do, amazing. Love that. Love helping everybody out as much as we can. Um. Someone asked, what's the difference between PCOS and PCOD? It's a tough question. Let me get the exact definition out. Uh, let's see. Multivitamins for PCOS. I really like the brand Pure Spectrum. It's like pharmaceutical grade supplements. Can I take Ovastol with metformin? Well, you know, Ovastol, they say you can take it with metformin, I've read, but I recommend choosing one because it might lower your blood sugar too much and it's important to take it with food too because you know anything that's gonna like help, help with blood sugar you want to take a food so okay so when i when i google or when i uh, look up what the difference between pcos and pcod this is what we get and just a fy shui like this page is for pcos so we like give recommendations for people with pcos so if you have PCOD, some of it might be helpful, but just be aware that we're more about PCOS. So uh, it says here, PCOS is a disorder of the endocrine system, while PCOD is a condition developed by the imbalance of hormones. So I think it's just like a terminology difference, like a way of saying it. Or like, Yeah, oh. it's very confusing for a lot of people. Just swipe up, swipe up. Sorry, time just ruined the life. My alarm went off. My alarm to post another post. Look, someone says, love how you guys are all about encouragement and don't bash other PCOS accounts with different advice and views. That is exactly right. That dude. is exactly right. What the hell is the point of bashing each other? I thought we're all here to help women with PCOS, yet people are just on their stupid competitive spirit. Keyboard thugs. Keyboard Twitter thugs, you know? Like, Jesus Christ, why don't you help someone for a change instead of talking shit? Uh, Sorry, I had to get that out of my system. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Keep it positive. Okay, on, uh, on YouTube, someone asked, what should I get first, Ovacetol or CBD? Well, it really depends on if you, if you have insulin resistance, yeah. I think we would say that, oh, like, probably Ovastol is the better first option, um, you know? 
basically go with Ovastol if you have insulin resistance. But if you believe you have a lot of inflammation in your body and like you feel like it's really getting to your, like affecting your life with inflammation, then yeah. probably CBD is a better approach. But we believe like if you're um, going through like insulin resistance and you know you have insulin resistance, then probably Ovastol is like the better first one. Yeah. And then maybe you can go to CBD after. Right. So someone asked, what does CBD do? So CBD is basically uh, very helpful for inflammation, helping with adrenal fatigue. And there's even research to show that it helps with weight loss and things like that. But basically CBD can, can help with, the, you know, the, if you have like a lot of adrenal fatigue, do you having stress, even if you're having anxiety, like if you're having trouble sleeping at night, CBD has been shown to help with that. You can ask Tallinn on her experience. When, she, when I give her CBD, she like falls asleep in like 30, 30 minutes. Sometimes I do it on purpose if I want to play video games, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, CBD is really helpful in those ways. And like one brand that we recommend is called Pure Spectrum CBD. If you go to PureSpectrumCBD.com and use the code The Sisterhood, one word, you'll get uh, 10% off. And basically, the reason we like Pure Spectrum CBD is because they have the full spectrum of cannabinoids, whereas there's other brands out there that kind of filter out the, all the helpful compounds because it's cheaper to make. So for that reason, we recommend Pure Spectrum. However, if you have another brand that you personally like and you found, then go for it. Just uh, I think the CBD in general is great. Shama says, can't thank you guys enough. I'm on my second Ovastol and CBD. I see a huge difference in how I feel and also lost 12 pounds with light weighted workouts. Your everyday stories inspire and push me. Love you guys. Oh, yeah. so nice. Why don't you? Oh, oh dry brushing. Yeah. Oh my God, you guys. I've really dropped the ball with the self care <laughs> components. I'll talk about it right now. Um, Wow, we got a lot of bravos, but some bananas on TikToks. People really sent us a lot of gifts. On um, they sent us a panda. Thank you, Princess Lily, for your it. gifts. Hold on. All right, go for it, babe. Um, let's see. So tofu and soy. I see questions on TikTok about tofu and soy. So tofu and soy, they're like in moderation. They're okay. Uh, just you got to be careful with soy because too much can you know. Um, create an imbalance in your hormones. So I think in moderation is all good. Uh, inositol and Ovastol, the same thing. So not necessarily. Ovastol is an inositol supplement, but however, Ovastol has a ratio of 40 to 1 myo and d chiro inositols, which is the same ratio found in the body. So for that reason, we really recommend Ovastol. And as well as um, we have tons of testimonials about Ovastol. So if you go to our Instagram highlights, you can see all the comments, all the DMs that we've got over the years of sisters trying Ovacetol and their and their um, the benefits they've seen. So that's another reason why we recommend Ovacetol. And also, um, you might not know this, but Ovacetol is actually cheaper because when you order Ovacetol, you get in a three month supply. And the three month usually with an Ostol supplements, you need about three months to fully balance the hormones and the insulin levels, which is why it comes in a three month supply. So. Uh, when it comes to other brands, other brands, I think they sell it in like one month. And if you buy it three times, you're basically going to pay more. So I know it may seem like it's more expensive, but actually, if you compare the three month supplies, it's actually one of the cheaper ones on the market. Cool, cool, Let's cool, cool, cool. see. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, show the dry brush. This is a dry brush. And what I like to do before I shower is lymphatic drainage. So I used to show this a lot, especially during coronavirus stress. Everyone was freaking out. And I thought that like a nightly routine is super important. So I tried to get everyone on that by showing my nightly routine, which is very all-encompassing and robust. So basically, what I like to do is grab this. I bought it off Amazon. And brush towards your heart, right? Like all the way up, all the way up, up your legs. And even like counterclockwise, I think, on your stomach. And it helps with lymphatic drainage. So it helps move like hormones and toxins and all these things like through your body to exit. So then like when you shower and stuff like that, you know, it will secrete basically. So that's what I read about dry brushing. And it's really I relaxing. Missed, I missed 2018 Tallinn dry brushing post. <laughs> So that was 2020, you guys. It was this year, January, March. Uh, 
anyways, so I do this. Um, the link, I think it's in the highlight called links. Yeah. And if it's not, I'll add it. Someone said, look at Mr. Muscle, or Mr. and Mrs. Muscle. They do awesome workouts. They have a 30-day challenge on right now. Yes, it's free and it's amazing. Nice. Thank you. Um, so then, the no, that's not us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I do this and then I do some CBD and then jade rolling, which is great for lymphatic drainage for your face and really prevents like cystic acne from coming around my period. So that's really good for my skin and it like presses serums into my skin. Um, so that's what I do. Lymphatic drainage. It like helps move your endocrine, blocks, your hormones and things like that. Yeah. Keep them pushing. Someone asked, are you going to be posting this live later? Yes, we'll post it right after it's done. But we're doing the giveaway live on this live. So I think in like 10, 15 minutes, we'll do the giveaway questions. Where It looks like I'm sweating when I do this. No, it's the light. I know. Uh, basically, we're going to ask two questions. And there's going to be two winners of a three-month supply of Avacitol. So stay tuned. Stay here. And, you know. Oh, hold on. I want to read this. Yeah, it's great. How Little did you find... Right how did you find the motivation to stick to new workouts and diets? My husband is my greatest supporter, but I think deep down I feel like a failure. And no. I quit so soon, and then I'm more disappointed. No, you, you are not a failure at all, ever. Yeah. You are trying your best to go through something that's very tough that a lot of women are going through. So you are not a failure whatsoever. Get I, that out of your mind. I remember uh, feeling that way. Like, especially because nothing would work. So even when I found something that did work, I didn't want to do it because I was convinced that nothing was going to work. Mm -hmm. Because I worked out so hard, that didn't work. I dieted so hard, that didn't work. So I was like, ugh, gluten, ugh, dairy, ugh, slow-weighted workouts, nothing's going to work. And then I'd give up. Yeah. And, you know, I still, like, have that lingering thought when I work out. Like, ugh, I'll never have a six-pack because it's just uh, you know but anyways it's possible it's all possible it's all possible get that out of your mind Absolutely, it's all possible rewire your brain be open-minded like i said in my instagram story yeah. last night you can do hard things yeah exactly and also like if you're starting a new diet or workout or, or any regime that you want to get yourself on you can't like expect yourself to be perfect, you know, like especially the first week or the first two weeks or a month, like it's really tough to just uh, start and be like, okay, I'm going to uh, be perfect at this from day one. How could you be perfect? You've never done it before and you're trying something new to, to better yourself, right? So really you have to think about consistency over perfection because you can never get perfect at anything. You know, there's no perfect person. It's all about consistency. Someone said he talks like he has PCOS. I mean, I'm here as an advocate. I wish I had PCOS just so I could relate more. <laughs> but, you know, I can't. Like, Talian has PCOS, so obviously you guys, there's a connection there. I'm just here as the okay. third wheel, maybe. I don't know. Someone asked about protein powder. So I wanted to mention my favorite protein powders because they all just came in the mail today, and I'm really excited about it. And Sirak is dry brushing now because he wants to be a sister. <laughs> um, so I linked this in my stories because I made a smoothie today with this chocolate flavor, which is my fave. But I want to tell you why I love this philosophy protein powder linked in stories. Mm -hmm. um, it's because, first of all, protein is so important to have in the mornings because it helps with keeping your blood sugar balanced throughout the day, especially up until lunch. So it's really important to start the day right, you know, not with like a big smoothie full of fruit or like a big acai bowl full of fruit. It's important to have a smoothie or whatever you want with lots of protein in it, have a banana or whatever serving of fruit you want, and keep it minimal with the sugar, especially if you're insulin resistant. Mm -hmm. So this one's great. It has no artificial sweeteners, which can spike your insulin and make you think that you're eating something sweet when you're not. So your body will pump all this insulin into your bloodstream and actually make your cravings worse later on in the day. So I don't recommend protein powders with artificial sweeteners either. So this one, for example, tastes so freaking good. And it has hemp seed protein in it, oh, 
cocoa nibs, ocean, maca root powder, which is great for your hormones, oh. mesquite seed powder, vanilla chia seeds, reishi mushroom powder. Ooh, I like that mushroom. Powder. That's so good for you. Yeah, All there's adaptogens. like no artificial ingredients or anything in there. Yeah, it's so good for stress and like, you know, fighting um, toxins and things like that. I just love yeah. adaptogens, like Show reishi it. powder and stuff. Here it is, philosophy, cacao, magic, boom. Okay, the boom. berry one has pomegranate powder in it. Kamu, kamu powder. Um, brown rice protein, goji berry powder, acai powder. This one's a little sweeter, but it's still like really low. It's not like sugar, literally. It's not that much. It's like one gram of sugar. Yeah. Okay, then there's the green dream one, which is zero grams of sugar. Hemp seed protein, spirulina powder, mesquite seed powder, maca powder, chia seeds, vanilla. And the cool thing it says on the bottom is that you can add to oatmeal, baked goods, yogurt, ice cream, juice, applesauce, peanut butter, baby food, dressing, soup. So you can add this into anything. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. You fool. My bad. Um... Okay, so that was, a, that was a protein yeah, powder? Yeah, that was my protein powder spiel. If you want to get some, it's linked in my bio. It's also linked in yeah. the highlight called links. Yeah. And it tastes bomb. Hell yeah. Uh, quickly. I mean, not bio stories. It's linked in stories. Okay, okay. Uh, it's okay. Uh, do you want to answer some workout questions? So someone said, I started strength, strength training and got into lifting heavy weights, but my doctor said this could be counterproductive because it could cause me to produce more testosterone. What are your thoughts? Great question. Well, I get this question a lot when it says, oh, if I do weights, will I get bulky and will I get, you know, higher testosterone? Well, it really depends how heavy, like if you're talking about heavy weights, then I wouldn't recommend it because that may cause, you know, higher levels of testosterone because your body is reacting to this, you know, crazy kind of like heavy weights that I've added. So really like when we talk about slow weight workouts, we're talking about like 10, 15 pounds on your workouts and things like that. Um... <laughs> We're talking about like 10 to uh, 10, 15 pounds of weight so that basically if you're not uh, created, you're able to really kind of um, control the intensity and still get a great workout. So I would say lower weights around 10, 15 pounds. And it's also really about diet too. Like you're not going to get bulky if you're eating like healthy, right? It's really about um, if, you're, if you're eating a lot of food and you're doing weight training, then you might get bulky, but you're still doing the right, you know, diet and lifestyle then you'll be, you'll be good. This is not a political platform. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> All righty. Controversy about HIIT workouts between PCOS holistic doctors cannot tell if HIIT is good or bad. So uh, really oh, interesting. Oh, no. Wait, hold on. Someone said, can I reverse PCOS at 35? Yes. Yeah, of course. It's not like there's no like cure that's going to make you never have PCOS. But basically, you can you're able reverse to reverse your symptoms. your symptoms and live symptom free and be yeah. totally fine. Yeah. Without medication. Exactly. Um, so, so HIIT workouts. So HIIT workouts, they basically stand for high intensity, uh, high intensity interval training. So basically... Um, you're going from like one workout to another workout to another one with no adequate rest between. You know, what this does is it elevates your heart rate, elevates your breathing, and then your body kind of spikes the cortisol to, in order for you to perform better. This is like a normal thing where basically your body realizes that you're under stress, so it just releases cortisol so that you're able to perform at your peak, right? That's what happens to marathon runners and like, and like people who do Spartan races and stuff like that. However, for women with PCOS, when you do that, basically you're not able to lower back down those stress hormones as easily due to, due, due to the hormonal imbalances. And what this does is your, your, the cortisol levels can stay elevated for days, and then you can feel you can get the get the feelings of adrenal fatigue. You can wake up feeling agitated, like you can't get out of bed. Your body's not performing at its best. It can cause inflammation, which can then lead to more issues with your PCOS, like weight plateau and weight gain. So with intense workouts, so. We recommend slow weighted workouts, which is something we've helped create for sisters. Um, you can see all the workouts, the library that we have in sisterhood, so that you can kind of basically follow. We have like a monthly program on the sisterhood, so you can do your workouts for that month based on the workouts we give you. And then the next month, we do a whole new uh, uh, batch, basically for the uh, basically for the whole month. 
He's not. <laughs> but he's a personal trainer. Yeah. Where are you guys yeah. from origin? We are Armenian. Yes. Yes. I, Somebody yeah. asked... Oh, wait, wait. No, go for me. Somebody asked... Um, oh, everyone was like freaking out when I said you can reverse all your PCOS symptoms. Um, Absolutely. And everyone's freaking out. Who the hell is this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm. Anyways. So everyone's... Yes. You can reverse your symptoms. You can live symptom free. Yeah. You can be. Okay. <laughs> Woo! So... <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, you can live symptom free. You know, you can live without PCOS. However, if you start eating poorly and like really give up on your lifestyle habits, then it will come back probably. And it works for so many sisters. And I seriously think that everyone should give it a try and see if it works for them. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But if it does, that's amazing. Yeah. And a couple of questions about natural approaches. On TikTok, someone asked, do I really have to take birth control? Um, well, it's there's there are natural options. We highly recommend listening to our episode with... I mentioned that they were taking um, Ovastol for a while, but their period still hasn't regulated, but other symptoms are getting better. So it sounds like it's it's doing something. What you want to do is pair lifestyle and diet changes with the Ovacetol. And I don't know if you're doing that already and you're still struggling. And if asking about, can, asking about can, can we use resistance bands when doing low intensity workouts? And yes, absolutely. Uh, basically like a weight, right? Because they're giving you resistance as you like pull on them and things like that. Just make sure you're getting them to be strong enough and things like that. And the same thing with body weight. I can't even lift that off the ground. My point is just get creative and try to find some stuff around your house that can act like a 5, like 10, 15 pound. Like a flower or something. Yeah. <laughs> Gluten free. Yeah. So just try to find some stuff around the house and you can absolutely do body weight exercises even to like get started. So yeah, for sure. We have a workout highlight. And we can help you there. But um, some of the workouts in the sisterhood, yeah, you can do it with things around the house. Full Everyone's like, that was hilarious. <laughs> I love it, love it, love it. I love how everybody laughs at my silly stuff. <laughs> okay, uh, there was a question. Okay, so, um, all right, we're going to do a quiz dance to come on over, and we're going to do it. Uh, until then, question about soy, babe. Sure. Soy, I recommend having... Minimally, don't get like a soy-based protein powder. Um, you know, not ideal, but sure. Every so often, a few times a week, it's good. Someone says, can I take a vow with birth control? Yes. Um, except for like once a year. <laughs> because I go based on how I feel. If I feel really good, if I feel um healthy and energetic and like it's working for me and i'm not fatigued and i'm not having cravings and things like that then i would just stick to it on the scale i'm a fan exactly the scale <laughs> and then somebody was asking about milk and like how to go dairy free are there alternatives so here is like our favorite brand it's called ripple yeah. ripple R I P P L E, and the great thing about this is it's like it's made out of pea protein, so it's basically very high in protein and very low oh, in carbs. That's, that's right, girl. That is right. Okay, so like if I look at this, it tells me that there's eight grams of protein, total sugar. Try finding that on dairy milk, and less than one gram of carbs, and still good amount of total fat, which is which you want fat because it's healthy for you. Honestly, it's a great option, sisters. Ripple milk. Just please make sure that when you are getting dairy-free milk, that you get the unsweetened kind. Unsweetened, because the sweetened kind will have the basically will have the sugar added and like other processed ingredients in there. That's right. Is it okay to do a thirty to one hour walk every day? Yeah. If you feel good, that's good. Oh. Sounds lovely. Someone asked, is it bad to do cardio? So basically, oh, hello, Arlene. Um, with cardio, basically, um, you can still do cardio, so don't worry about that. Just with cardio, you want to be able to do it at a slow, like on cruise control, basically. You want to be able to jog and basically control your heart rate and your breathing the whole time. So that you're just jumping up and down as the treadmill just moves. So don't do a treadmill. Also, when you do a treadmill, it's just pounding on your joints. So if you have knee and ankle pain, it's not going to help you. So you can try running on grass 
or using elliptical. Elliptical is great because it gives you resistance. Okay, it's 12.25, time for a pop quiz. Right before that, let's celebrate. Strauss Strip says, I have been eating clean according to PCS uh, and got my period after three months. So proud. Ooh. Great job, sister. Great job. Okay. okay. What's the, oh, 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 oh. Okay. We both have a question. Yes. And we are going to select, you know, the first person who answers correctly to win a three-month supply of Ovacetol. Yeah. And then we're going to ask you which question you liked better. Yes. Because we are constantly arguing over <laughs> what question we're going to ask you yeah. guys. Okay. So, so two questions. Here's the first one. First person to answer the first one will get Ovacetol. I forgot my question. You forgot your question? <laughs> now I forgot my question. Okay. All right. Should I do my first Yes, that was okay. Okay. A little, little talk before we do it. All right. Okay. Here we go. All right. Cool, 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 cool. First question. I'll ask this one since it was mine. Okay. First question. Okay. You need two out of three symptoms to be diagnosed with PCOS. The first one is ovarian cysts. The second one is irregular periods. What's the third one? What's the third one? Two out of three. Third one, first person to answer is going to get the Ovacetol. I'm nervous. I can't breathe, Tommy. You're fine. What's going to happen? Uh-uh. No. Nope. It's not as... Mm -mm. That's energy I, levels. I know, but your citizen's the same. It is? Yeah. Okay. Hey. It's part of it. You yeah, 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 yeah. Part of it, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so who is it, babe? Sambal, she said it first. Okay, Sambal uh, underscore A, you are the winner. You said hirsutism, which is correct. I thought it was hyperandrogenism. But hirsutism is a result of that. But that's just one part of the answer. Talene, this is, you are so bad at this. See, Doug, you don't understand. Hirsutism is hyperandrogenism. But... Hirsutism is one of the effects of hyperandrogenism. Yes. But it's not all of hyperandrogenism. You know I'm right. Okay. You know I'm right. Why don't we give it to her as well as the next person who said... Wait, hold on. Okay, we froze. Jordan. Jordan okay. can't even. Okay, you know what? Because you also said androgen levels. Okay. We're having three winners. That's right. Okay. Right? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Let's, let's do that. So we're going to give this... Executive decision. Yes. So, so okay. Sumbal said hirsutism, which is correct. But, uh, and then um, Jordan can't even said androgen levels. I, f I feel that's the full answer. Uh-huh. Right? But since uh -huh. Tali made a mistake... We don't want to break anyone's heart. That's right. We're going to give it to both of you sisters. And it wasn't really a mistake because I'm still right. <laughs> This is exactly what's wrong with relationships. <laughs> Women can't say when they're wrong. I'm just joking. <laughs> joking. God, get the hell out of here. Okay, we have three winners. Okay, okay, okay. Those were two. Yeah, those were two. All right, now we got Some ballet. You're welcome. Everybody gets free of Vastal. You get a Vastal. You get a Vastal. This is an Oprah Winfrey episode. Seriously. Okay, what's the third? Okay, okay. Okay. One more question, and this person is going to get three months supply of Vasitol as well. Okay? So, this one is Talin's question. She ruined my question that I knew the answer of, but she... Go. Okay, my question. Yes. Are, you, are you sure? Yes. Shut up. Okay. Who did we interview on the podcast that was famous a famous actress and filmmaker with PCOS. We interviewed her. What is her name? Yes, we had a famous actress, filmmaker, to talk about her PCOS journey. Very enlightening for all the sisters to see and like to get inspired by. What was her name? We got, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, we're getting a lot of I wrong answers. She's an actress. Actress filmmaker. and filmmaker. She was on a show that we all watched when we were younger, if we watched it. Someone said it. The lady from Degrassi. We need, we need the full name, sisters. The lady from Degrassi is almost there. Man, everyone's saying Jolene. It's not, not Jolene. She's not an actress, you guys. She's not an actress. Jolene is a doctor. No, it's not Paulina. And Andrea. Andrea. There we go. Aisha underscore Tayob won the Vasitol. You go, girl. 
everybody was saying Jolene, but Jolene is great. We love Jolene, uh, Dr. Jolene Brighton. She was one of our best, one of our best guests we ever had. But she's not a filmmaker or actress. She's a she's a doctor. <laughs> but yeah, it was Andrea Lewis. Um, uh, if if you don't know, Andrea Lewis is a actress filmmaker from Degrassi. She came on our podcast about I think what a month ago, and she talked about her journey with PCOS and basically. Um, like how she's been doing and what worked for her, what didn't work for her. And it was really a great episode to kind of, to let yeah. sisters know that there are everyone, everyone out there can be anyone. PCOS. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. Leah yeah. Michelle has PCOS. Posh Spice has PCOS. If anyone is connected to these people, please send them our information. We'd love to interview them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there's lots of people. A lot of people saying we're their favorite couple. People are saying we're so cute. People are la loving your laugh. <laughs> Everything. Thanks, guys. Yes. So we have three giveaway winners. Yeah. We, we hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> Originally planned on two, but now it's three. You guys are sucking us dry. <laughs> we have plenty to give away. Yeah. If you didn't win, sisters, don't worry because we're doing a giveaway every single day of the month. Nobody else is doing this except for us. So please make sure you're following us day to day because every day we have a different thing to make it fun. Like some days we say comment on a post and we'll pick one winner. Some days we do a story thing. Some days we do a live giveaway with quiz. So every day we're keeping it different and fun. And every day you'll, you'll be able to win. So do another one. Yeah, this month we're Tomorrow. giving this month we're giving away 23 month supplies of Avastol. 20 21. Of them. 21. 21. And we're giving away 10 uh, one month free to the sisterhood because um, you know, why not, right? So that's 30 giveaways, so 31 now. And yeah, all the participation will be through like the Instagram and stuff like that. So make sure you keep on following us to basically, um, you know, yes. keep, on, um, keep on winning. All right. Uh, all right. Quick thing. Um, if you haven't listened to today's podcast episode yet, um, today's episode was five mistakes when trying to lose weight with PCOS. It's a great episode to know like what are the five biggest mistakes that Talian has made and other sisters might make. It doesn't mean that you, you, there's something wrong with you. It's just that there's a lot of, you know, misconceptions and myths that's thrown at everybody. So like you want to kind of get things clear and help you kind of get on your journey as best as possible. What, you know, whatever is best for you. Right. All right. Yes. Link in bio to take a listen. That is right. And we'll be back with another live sometime later this week. Was it Thursday? Yes. Thursday. Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday, Friday. Thursday, I think. Yeah. So we'll have a we'll have, we'll do a live on Thursday as well. We'll do a quiz on Thursday to keep it fun, just like this. But you know, make sure you stay tuned. Time for lunch. Yes. Good. Bye, sister. All righty. Okay. Facebook. Sorry, we didn't look at you, but yes. follow us on Instagram. Yes, and uh, YouTube as well.